Okay, I'm going to show you how to do super netting right now. I've shown you how to do subnetting, both Class C and Class B in prior videos. You'll find those videos, links to those videos, in the description below. I'm going to show you how this works now. I laid out the, this is very similar to the Class B layout, although we're doing a Class C. Class C, typically the line would lay here, and then if you needed to borrow into it, to subnet it, you would reach this way. Remember, we would slide the bar with a Class C. Make sure you watch this Class C video if you really want to understand this. And let's say we needed uh, eight subnets. The, the boss wanted to have the everybody separated, divided from each other. So he wants eight subnets in his Class C. Well, we only get 32 hosts in each subnet, which kind of makes it difficult in some cases, if you have a bigger company, let's say the boss says, I need a thousand hosts. This is not enough. Well, I slick them all the way back. I'm not getting a thousand hosts in a class C at all. Just not happening. And if I go to a class B, it's going to give me like 65,000 hosts. I don't need that many. I don't want to get that many. I just need a thousand. So he says, I need a thousand. So I've got the bar here and I lay it out this way which is different than the way we did before. Remember, the Class C started looks just like this. This is a Class C, and we're only working with the last octet, the last octet in that in that subnet mask. And it would have been 255, 255, 255.0. And then as you borrow, you borrow and you add up these these numbers up here as you're borrowing. So if I borrowed three, I'd add up these three numbers. It would be 192. Uh, one tw uh, 224. So you put a line here, 224, and the 224 would go here. It'd be 255, 255, 255, 224. And that would give me eight subnets, 32 hosts, uh, sitter number slash 24, magic number 32, and you would know how to break those all down and make networks. In this case, we're just going to make one big network out of several Class C sub. Uh, Class C networks, not subnets, networks. And here's how we do it. Normally we slide to the right and we're borrowing from the host side to give us more networks. Now we're going to slide to the left and we're going to borrow from the network side to give us more hosts. So as we slide this way, you can see the numbers. When, when I counted my, uh, my networks, in the class C, I started with two under the first dot, under the first bit, and doubled them as I went, right? So when I go the other way, I have to get smaller, right? So half of two is one, half of one is a half, half of half is a quarter, etc., etc., etc. The easiest way to remember that is if you look at the the bit value on the top, you can see that it matches the the number of the right here. So you see that. So that makes it a little easier. So the boss said he wants to use Class C. He doesn't want to have to pay for 65,000 network uh, hosts, but he wants 1,000. So we're going to do that. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to use a Class C SuperNet. We're going to get over 1,000, but it's going to take four Class C. When it says a quarter, that means you need four of them. If it says an eighth, you need eight, eight of them. If it says a sixteenth, that means you get a sixteenth of a network. So that means you have to have 16 class Cs to use this. And I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay. Before in the class C, remember we had a list of subnets that went down the line. Well, now we're just going to have one big network. And we're going to put four class C networks into it. We're going to start out with the network which is the uh, just the network you can't it's an unusable number you can't use it as a host you can't assign a computer to this this IP address because it's the network you also can't assign the broadcast the broadcast is not usable number the usable numbers are in here all right So we slid our line over to borrow bits from the network side. First, we bumped over this way. And if we put the line here, we would have 
two subnets or two class C's would equal 250, uh, 510, 512 minus 2. Because we know we get 254 out of a class C. So two class C's would be double that, right? Four class C's would be four times that. Eight class C's would be eight times that, etc., etc. So this is showing you how many hosts. And as you'll notice, the host line, the hosts go up as we go to the left. They go down as we go to the right. The networks go up as we go to the right and down as we go to the left. When we get past, when we get to the point where it can't go any lower, of course we can always go lower, uh, we just keep getting a smaller number. So half of one is, is a half. Half of a half is a quarter. Half of a quarter is an eighth, etc., etc. So we're just working on this one. I'll give you some other examples. But you can see, normally, in a class C, you're only working with this last octet, but we're not. We're using the last two octets. And you'll see them change. See, it starts with a zero here in the third octet, and the broadcast is a three. That's because we're using all the numbers from 0 0.1 to 3.254. So when you get to 0 0.255, normally that would have been a broadcast for a network, right? But it's not in this case. The 0 0.255 is actually a usable host. The 1, the next one down, the 1.255 is also a usable host. The 2.255 is also a usable host because they're all included in this range of hosts because we supernetted them all together. How does the computer know that it's supernetted together? Well, the first thing that the computer recognizes is that it's a class C because it says 192 or anything above 192. It's a class C. That's all we work with. Is, say 220, that would have been a class C. The computer knows it's class C right away. And then the next thing that the computer recognizes is that for a class C, we're using the third, we're cutting into the third octet. And a class C, in, in every case, it's 255.255.255.0, and then we change this number. So when it sees this number zero and this number less than 255, it immediately knows this has got to be a supernet because a class C never cuts into the, the third octet, unless it's a supernet. So if the teacher says to you, I need you to show me how I can use a class C network and get a thousand uh, hosts out of it. And most people are gonna say it's impossible. It's impossible because the maximum you can get is 254. We already know that from a class C. But that's if you're subnetting or if you're just using a class, regular class C that's not been subnetted. If you want more hosts, then you got a supernet, which means that you're going to have to combine more than one class C. So this is pretty much all the information you need. Uh, there will be the need to absolutely understand class C subnetting and I would suggest class B subnetting because this looks just like the class B. The only difference is in a class B, we start the two over here. So it's two, and then it runs all the way over here to 65,000. Then we start here with two, and it goes all the way over here to 65,000. I didn't finish these numbers because I didn't feel like it, but you can do it. It's just this number times two is that number, this number times two is that number, et cetera, et cetera, and it should end up with 65,000 and something. Um, but I, I didn't finish it because I'm just using these examples. Now let's say that the professor said he wants uh, 2,000. Well, then you'd have had to put the bar here to get to 2,000, right? Because it always it's the hosts are always on the right side of the bar. So let's say he wants 2,000. We put the bar here. We point the line this way. We get our 2,000. We have to use eight networks. So it would have, instead of finishing here, this number would have been seven, and this number would have been seven. And that's the only difference, really. If he would have, if he would have put the line here, or if they would have told told you you needed uh, uh, four thousand hosts, and you put the line here, then you would have had to have sixteen networks. 
Well, 16 networks would mean you would change this number to 15, right? Because 0 all the way to 15.254. And this would be 15.255 because the next one would be 16, right? So that's how you do it. Uh, again, I'm going to put in the description below the Class C, and I would watch the Class C video first, and then the Class B. Because really, you need to know these things. I mean, if you're doing supernetting, you really should understand subnetting. Because they're, you know, usually the subnetting is the first thing you do. So if I would suggest you watch my Class C, my Class B video, even if you understand the subnetting, because I use this same uh, chart for my subnetting. So I'll have a chart just like this for Class B. And I'll have a chart just like this, the big picture, for class B. Of course, with subnetting, we have a bunch of networks. And with a supernet, we just have one big one. Okay? And just so you know that. Now, remember that if you slide the bar over, let's say we slid the bar over here, this number would change to a 21, right? Put the line here as 21. It would also change our subnet mask. Why? Because we're adding the numbers and 255 for the line here. If we move the line over here, it's going to be 4 less than 255, right? Or 248, right? If you put the line here, it's going to be 240. That's the number that you're changing, the third octet. This, Whenever the line's in the third octet, that's the, that's the octet you're messing with. So if I move my line all the way over here, then I just add these. Whatever's on the left side of the line, those are the numbers I add. Add those numbers up for that octet and put them in. Since we didn't mess with the fourth octet, it stays zero all the way through. The computer absolutely understands that a 192 is a class C, and it also knows that if you're messing with the third octet, it must be a class C that is supernetted. So, again, look, watch my videos, class C first, class B second, and then uh, this should be real easy for you to understand. If you have any questions, please contact me. I'm um, always helpful and ready to help you. Good talking to you. Talk to you later. Bye.